Hey everyone, it's Erin's Life here, and welcome to the official, official first day of Spring Into Action series. Now, I do apologize for not uploading it yesterday, the day it was supposed to be uploaded. It was because I ordered a new tripod, which I now have, so thank goodness um, I needed to order a new one, so... Sorry that this was a day late, but it's okay. I feel like it gave you all plenty of time to focus on two days ago, the video I put out, um, deciding your why. So if you haven't done that yet, go to that video first. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. And watch that video first as an introduction and deciding your why, which if you don't know what that means, you haven't watched that video yet. So make sure you go watch it. Um, but today, we are officially on the first out of six sections of my workbook in order for you to change your life. The first section is your mind, because I feel like before you usually do any sort of planning or changing of any sort in your life, you need to check in with yourself first, check in with what's going on up here. So our first introduction question here today is basically, do you do any activities to help strengthen your mind? Now this could be anything from word puzzles, like word searches, or uh, my dad and I play this game called Wordscapes, which is a really good game for that. Um, whatever it may be, just think of whatever activities strengthen your mind. And I would like you to write out in the comment section down below your answer. And I feel like it'd be really interesting to see how everyone strengthens their own mind. For me, it's that Wordscapes game I play from time to time. Um, coloring, any sort of artwork, as you could tell, I have a lot of artwork and it does strengthen my mind a lot and journaling also helps a lot to get what's going on up here onto paper and doesn't stay up there. So let me know what you guys' answers are and um, what you'll need for today's video is, this is optional, but my book, it would be really beneficial for all of you to have the workbook. So if you haven't gotten it yet, it only ships in one to two days and it'll get to you within the next four days, so hopefully by the next video and you can always catch up. So if you would like to purchase my workbook to go along with these books, the link is in the description box down below. But you do not need to have my workbook. It would definitely be beneficial to look at what I'm looking at and to fill it out in your own time and also along with the videos. But again, you do not need it. If you don't have the money for it right now or anything like that due to COVID or just anything going on in your life, you could just take out a piece of paper or take out a journal that you want to dedicate to this series. Whatever you want to do, take that out. Take out a pen and also any sort of coloring um, thing. So this could be literally gel pens. I have like a whole um, thing of gel pens here. Um, it could be markers, it could be colored pencils, it could be whatever you use to doodle or draw or anything to express your creativity. You could also definitely use some stickers. Stickers are really cool too. Um, whatever you want to do to make it your own, go ahead and grab those items. Now that you have those items, let's get into the workbook itself and let's talk about each of the mini sections in the clean your mind section. Alright, now that you have your workspace ready, let's get into the workbook or open up your journals or have your piece of paper out so then that we can fill in the sections um, together. So this is actually the little introduction part that I didn't show in the introduction video. It basically covers pretty much everything that we talked about in the first video. The only thing I did not mention in it is what exactly the, um, I don't think I mentioned this anyways, what the main lessons are, and I definitely didn't mention this little PS part, so I am going to read this. So it says, these are the main lessons we will be going through together in this book. Clean your mind by journaling, meditating, and taking tech breaks. Clean your body, clean your spirit, clean your environment, clean your schedule, and clean your emotions. 
P.S. Doodle and draw on each cover page and send pics to my Instagram at StarSketchArt. Feel free to do that as we're doing this video together, by the way. And you can expect to, but not limited to, learn new ways to clean up your life in a new perspective, do activities to help incorporate practice the cleaning of your life, and to continue to incorporate these practices in your daily routine. With all this in mind, let's now spring into action the life you want to create for yourself. So again, you can take out your, you can even use like, with this kind of paper, I would suggest, as you can see, the markers kind of go through the back here, which is okay. It's your book. Um, but gel pens work great. Um, just anything you have. So this is what I did with the cover page. Again, you can doodle and do whatever you want with your page. But I decided to do like a color theme for mine here. I did this a while ago. I um, only filled out a couple of the sections already. Um, but the other ones I will make sure to fill out beforehand of the videos. But anyway, so the clean your mind section, I did mind in big letters. And again, you can basically doodle this however you want. So that's the beauty of it. And as you can see here, I doodled throughout the book as well. And you can feel free to do this. So it says here, your brain is a whole world in itself. So for me to ask you to clean up your mind would take a whole lifetime. Fortunately, there are some habits you can implement into your daily routine that can help in cleaning up your messy, clouded up mind. These habits are journaling, meditation, and other tech-free activities. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is journaling, which I mentioned as my uh, way to kind of clean up my mind and to strengthen my mind. So, the benefits of journaling are expressing your thoughts in a healthy way, refresh your mind to a more positive mindset, and it's also a way for you to thoroughly solve your problems or brainstorm ideas. So, in your workbook, feel free to answer this, or again, if you have a piece of paper or a journal, feel free to write this question down and answer it as well. Do you like journaling? Why or why not? And I answered this myself. I said, yes, I love to journal. It allows me to express my feelings and thoughts in a creative way and use my creative writing skills, which is another benefit to uh, journaling is that you don't only have to do it whatever is going on in your thoughts and mind. You can obviously make it into like a poet, a poem, I should say, or any sort of thing like that. So that's what I use it for as well. So pause here to answer that question. And we will move on to the next page. And feel free to leave your responses to any of the questions that we talk about in this um, section. And then the next question is, what is your intention when journaling? So for me, my intention is to vent out my thoughts onto paper and out of my head. This is so important to have an intention to anything, especially to journaling, because you don't want to go into your journal just like, like not have no idea what to write. So having an intention when you're journaling is a really good idea. This might be good if you do get a journal to write out your intention on the first page. So if you're ever stuck, you can just read the intention here. So for example, I would write, my intention is to vent out my thoughts onto paper and out of my head, no matter what is going on kind of a thing. Um, so feel free to answer this question and take your time with this because it is very hard to think of an intention sometimes. All right, the next question is what kind of journaling do you like to do? Because there's many, many, many forms of journaling out there. Uh, if you really don't know, then my answer might help you think of some other ways of journaling. So I like to art journal, creative writing, answer journal prompts and write about my day or even just like my life or anything like that uh, or just again my thoughts onto paper. So art journaling is a form of journaling where you actually get to draw or paste in pictures and write out quotes and just make it really colorful. There's a lot of resources on Pinterest um, that talk about art journaling if you want to get into that. Creative writing again with like poetry and fiction stories and short stories and whatever you want to do. I love doing those in my journal. And answering journaling prompts 
we're actually going to talk about this on the next page so I won't get too much into that and writing about my day it's always like nice to be like dear diary today I woke up and there was a squirrel outside or something like you just write about whatever happened I usually only do this if something exciting happens or if something I really do want to remember in the future I will write it in my journal um so feel free to answer this of what kind of journaling you like to do and the next question is, what is your journaling routine? Don't have one? Create one here. So how I kind of did this was a morning and night um, journaling routine, which I'm not going to lie, I slipped off of this for uh, when COVID happened and quarantine happened. I kind of did slip off of this, but I do plan on doing this again. Um, this is actually motivating me to do it starting today or tomorrow, but... Um, yeah, so this would be my ideal, I guess, journaling routine. So in the morning, I would write my intention for the day. I would express my gratitude, meaning I would write three things I'm grateful for that day. And sometimes I'll write why, or sometimes I'll just leave it at that. And morning pages, which is another form of journaling that a lot of people don't know. It's basically when you sit down in the morning with your cup of coffee, if you would like to. You can make this into a routine and just literally write out your thoughts on three full pages in your journal of just whatever is in your brain. It's kind of like a brain dump in a way to get all your thoughts onto paper. So I love doing this and I feel like I should be doing this again. And then nighttime, write out what happened during the day. This is also a good time to do that, especially like to if like anything significant happened during the day. Express gratitude, so again, think of three things that I'm grateful for from that day. And accomplishments and lessons of that day. This is a really good thing to do every single day because, yes, there may be things great that happened that day, and there may be things that you weren't so happy about that day. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't a lesson in it. So that's why I like to do this a lot. So feel free to pause right now to write out your journaling routine. And make it really realistic because um, don't like push yourself too hard even because you want to make journaling fun. So write out a routine that you can actually stick to. Alright, and now that you've done that, um, I wrote a little thing down here for those of you that are getting into journaling of just some ideas of some supplies that you would like to use. So for example, supplies to journal. A notebook slash plain, um, a notebook slash blank sketchbook slash any form of paper. And what I mean by blank sketchbook is I have this thing, um, and I'll show you it, um, that was relatively cheap on Amazon and, uh, cheaper than most sketchbooks, I should say. And it's by Arteza, and it's just this, like, blank, this, like, black, um, sketchbook here, and it literally just has blank pages in it so if you're somebody that really likes to uh, art journal or don't really like the lines of a journal then I would totally suggest that or again it could just be like a notebook that you can use um, or even just piece of paper that you staple together whatever you have use it and if you want to dedicate yourself to journaling I would recommend a decorative one it's just way funner that way <laughs> Um, and then a pencil or a pen. So I prefer pen in my journal, but of course you can use really cute pencils. Like I got this one that says inspire everyone. Um, cute pencils I found are at like Dollar Tree even. So, and then these are optional stuff, but I feel like kind of make the, you know, journal really pop. So stickers, as I mentioned before, um, I have them here in my, uh, little organizer here. I have some of my little pony stickers. I also have some Disney stickers and stuff. Dollar Tree has great stickers. I even have this book that you can like create your own stickers. I thought that was really cool. Got it from Target. Um, and yeah, and then markers. Markers are also an essential. These are, um, I have like Sharpie markers. I have these Walmart brand Sharpie markers. I have alcohol based markers. Markers are great. <laughs> Washi tape. I have a whole entire uh, supplies case, a unicorn supplies case, 
full of washi tape because I love it. <laughs> and I use it in my bullet journal sometimes or while I'm journaling. And that's another form of journaling, by the way. I, there's so many journals. If you guys are interested in on just like journaling in general, I recently did a video called my journal collection. I will make sure to put it in the description box. And if I forget, just go to my channel. It's one of my newest videos. So you can check out all the journals that I have. Um, any sort of art slash craft supplies you want. So say if you want like glitter in it, go ahead. I don't like glitter. <laughs> Glitter's not my thing. But if you want glitter, do glitter. If you want different forms of craft paper, that's another thing that's really cool is that you can cut out different craft paper and make it super fun. You can use that. You can use paint pens. I have these ones from Target and I have Posca pens um, that are really popular. Um, you can literally use anything to journal. That's the greatness about it. So let's move on to this activity, which is actually really, really interesting. So I have activities like this all throughout my workbook. So it says research a list of journaling prompts on YouTube slash Pinterest and write them down here. I put some for you. So the ones I put were, where do you see yourself one year from now? That's a really good one. What are your current goals? That's another great one. And write a letter to your past slash future self. That one's another great one. So I, on my workbook, it's like front to back, 25 that you can fill in. Um, I will give you a few examples. If you want to number uh, your thing 1 to 25 and put these first three in there, then that's great. But if you have the workbook, here are a few examples that I put in my um, list. So what are your values? That's a really good one to ask yourself because it really shows what kind of person you are and like how you see yourself and how you see others kind of a thing. Uh, what makes you feel peaceful? I like to do this especially when I have anxiety. What brings you comfort? That's another good one. Um, where do, uh, what do you want to accomplish over the next month? This is a good one to do before you start planning for a month ahead or something like that. What does happiness mean to you? That's a really deep question, to be honest, and I love those kind of questions. What activities set your soul on fire? For me, it's definitely art and like creating artwork, for sure. And lastly, what are the biggest lessons in life that you have learned? I like to do these, especially when I have a birthday. I'll be doing a birthday type video of 20 thing, 23 things I learned at 23. I love doing those kind of things, so I'll definitely be journaling on that and then making a video on it. I love those kind of vi those kind of uh, videos and journaling prompts as well. So make your list of 25 journaling prompts. You could pause here. And I wrote this on the bottom here that says use the journaling prompts wherever or whenever you go to write in a journal and need some inspiration. One thing you could do is cut the prompts into strips and place the strips into a jar and pr pick your prompts randomly every day. So what you could do is rip out this piece of paper and cut out the uh, journaling prompts, stick them in a jar, stick them anywhere, like, like a cup that you have even, and every single day just choose a different one and see what you can journal to help you kind of motivate yourself to journal. I honestly might do this. Because I wasn't going to do it because I knew I wanted to do like a group on it. But yes. Um, so that is journaling and some ways to journal. Journaling is just so exciting to me and I love it. Me and my writing group talk about it all the time. But let's move on to the second most effective way I have found to strengthen your mind. Meditation. Benefits. Slow down the mind, thoughts, and breathing. To stop rushing through your day. Ground yourself after or before something that triggered or made you upset. This is really important um, meditation in general because, again, it helps you slow down and to be like, okay, I need to tune into the present moment right now. And it's like, oh, just feels so like relaxing. Uh, some types of meditation are walking meditations, literally just walking up and down your street with music on and just zoning into that or without music whatever floats your boat art meditation so basically just either putting on music again or 
just without music and just drawing whatever comes to mind no matter what it is for me this is really relaxing especially when i do my trippy art stuff yeah watching the clouds just getting out a blanket and just watching the clouds or if you're in a very busy place in the world right now with covid and everything look out your window and just cloud watch and just see what kind of things they look like oh that kind of looks like a tree with like roots coming out. I'm looking outside my window by the way. Um, but anywho, mindfulness. Mindfulness is a um, really good practice to just kind of like stop and be in tune with yourself. So an example of this is we're just going to sit here for a minute and we are going to think about one of each of these things, okay? We're going to find one thing we can see one thing we can hear, one thing we can touch, one thing we can smell, and one thing we can taste. So, the one thing that I see is my black paint pen here. The one thing I can hear is the air conditioner in my parents' bedroom. The one thing I can touch is my desk here. I have my wrist over here, um, feeling it. One thing I can smell, ooh, it still kind of smells like my lunch <laughs> from earlier. I had, um, some soup and a sandwich, so it kind of still smells like that in here. And one thing I can taste, which this might be kind of gross, but my spit, because <laughs> I'm not eating anything right now. But Or it can be water if you have that around or anything like that. So that's one way that you can like... Mindfulness is basically taking a method of you being able to tune into the present moment. And lastly, we have mantras and affirmations. Basically, you could do this in your journal too, of just writing out mantras and affirmations for yourself every single day. But you can even say them out loud like, I am beautiful. I am divine. I am powerful. I can create my own reality. Most of them start with I, or you could say my life is full of abundance. So you can just say powerful things like that and it helps you get into, again, a positive mindset. Um, so what types of meditation interests you? So I'm interested in mindfulness. I've been doing it for a year or two now. Mantras and affirmations, I need to do more of that, and walking meditations, I love walking meditations. So, what types of meditation are you interested in? You can answer the question in your journal or in your workbook, um, things that you can research more about later and get into. There's a ton of YouTube videos and blogs about meditation in general, so make sure you check those out. And also, speaking of resources, resources to help you get started. Headspace app. This is a free app you can get on your phone. I have used it before that is just all guided meditations to help you learn more about meditation and how to tune into your brain. So highly recommend that. It's free uh, for iPhones, I know, but if you have Android, you might have to check. The Peace app, it's basically the same concept as Headspace, just a different, it's more of um, audio meditations that are guided but you can also do like sounds and stuff and YouTube meditation so if you because these two apps you have to like pay for for some things if you want something free and easy research definitely use YouTube for it so that's meditation in a nutshell um, I'm pretty sure yeah we're on our last little part here and then last page so now we are going to talk about technology free activities. So this is activities you can do without any cell phone, laptop, um, tablet, nothing like that. This is things you can do without using those. So first one, make crafts. This is awesome to do without technology and just to, you know, make things. You could do DIY crafts that you may have found on YouTube and just disconnect for a little bit and make them. You can paint on canvas. Just do whatever um, kind of crafty things that you like. 
talking to someone in person. This could be going out to lunch with somebody and talking to them. This could be having them come over. This could be, um, this is not talking to somebody on the phone. This is talking in person. This could be your mom, your dad, your sister, whatever you want it to be. Playing board games. This is amazing. Me and my family play Yahtzee pretty much every single day uh, before dinner. And it's just a nice way to disconnect and to just focus on something else. Doing a puzzle. I am, oh my goodness, addicted to puzzles. Um, I don't do them as often. I had like a phase where I was just doing them, doing them, doing them. But now I've taken a break. But I love doing puzzles. They're great to just like focus on something. It's like a board game to just focus on something else. Planning in a planner. This is awesome, especially if, like, a, if you have a bullet journal. This is allows you to just be creative and be able to focus on what you need to get done for the week or the day or whatever the case may be. Reading. This is amazing. I've been starting to do this more often and it's great to, you know, just be off social media and just read. Read outside, read on my porch, read in my bedroom, whatever I want to do. Going outside. Yes, this could be a technology activity if you do decide to bring your phone outside, but the point of this is is to go outside without your technology. Go outside and just play with my nieces or play with my dogs or blow bubbles or just sit outside and talk to people, like whatever the case may be. Or go swimming or something. Listen to music on the radio or record player. So for me, it's definitely my record player. If I ever want to disconnect from my phone for a little bit and just do whatever, I listen to music on my record player while I do art or something like that. Coloring. This is awesome for that. I have a whole collection of coloring books if you guys want me to do a coloring book collection over on my art channel. Eat at a dinner table with family. I do this pretty much most work nights, um, me and my family have a sit down dinner together and it allows us to be off our phones and all of that and just to talk about what we did that day and uh, talk about things that we've been looking up or things that are on the news or whatever, just to be like present with people. And last but not least, taking a nap. It's a good way to shut off your brain, especially if you didn't get a good night's sleep the day before. And yeah. So on this last page, the activity is to write a list of your tech-free activities. And basically the point of this is a list that you can go to, say if you want to be off your phone, and just to, you know, do the things on the list. Again, you can also include the things I mentioned on the list before this page, but these are also just more personalized for you of what you like to do. So these are a few examples that I put tarot card readings. I love just being on my, off my phone and just doing a tarot card reading just to check in with myself. Reading is part of my personal list for sure. Friendship bracelets. I have been getting into making friendship bracelets. I literally have a whole Ziploc bag full of yarn um, and sometimes I'll just put on my record player and you know make some bracelets for people or just in general or whatever the case may be. Clean and declutter. This is awesome. Uh, sometimes I will use my phone to like play EDM music but that's the only technology based thing that I do when I clean my room and stuff. Um, and lastly I would have to say going for a walk or getting some fresh air and shopping. Just being out of the house kind of a thing and just being off my phone and just going out with people or by myself or whatever the case may be. So take the time now to pause this and write out your list of tech-free activities. Alright, so now that you have this list, you can reference it whenever you need to. And this actually ends, because on the next page is Clean Your Body, which we won't get to until the next video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this official first episode of Spray Into Action Cleaning Your Mind. And so what I would like you to do in the meantime is to figure out ways you can incorporate meditation, journaling, and tech-free activities throughout your week and throughout your days. Because um, I feel like it would be super beneficial for all of us to practice these. 
and these are three main practices that I personally use as well and I can definitely say they help a lot. So I hope you are all excited for the next section. Leave your comments down below if any questions that you have for me and any answers to the uh, questions mentioned in the workbook. I am going to go now and probably go do some journaling or a tech free activity now that I'm talking about it. But I will see you guys all in the next video on Saturday when we talk about cleaning your body. Bye everyone!